Okay, welcome to Truth Bites. This is a program I'm putting on me, Mike Mew, and John Flutter. We're putting this together because we want to get a lot of information out there as quickly as we can without massive background preparation. And you know what I think? John, I like a two way conversation. I like a two-way conversation. We've both come to this with different points of view, but basically hold the same philosophy on our treatment. Yeah. We not only share similar opinions, but we we always, we have great chats. And also both of us have been at the coalface. I've been doing clinical dentistry, helping children to grow straighter teeth for the better part of 50 years during my professional career. And you've been doing much the same. Much the same thing. I wouldn't consider myself to be an academic, I have read a lot of academic texts, but I'm essentially a clinician. I know how to treat children and how to help children to grow straighter teeth and therefore lead a healthier life. I think that's very true. And I've watched you over the years, John, try so many different things. And, you know, you've, you've, you've probably entered the business arena more than I have, and I have great respect for you that. And you've found out what's work at, and what you can run a business on. Mm-hmm. And I think between us, we, we're going to go through a lot of different topics and, you know, have a conversation about those topics. And in that conversation, I think a lot of interesting stuff will come out that I hope people will be interested in. And particularly, we want to engage families and uh, particularly young children, because we feel that growing children, we can influence the growth and development, not only leading to straighter teeth, but a healthier life. I think that's very important. I mean, it's got to be prevention we're talking about. It's prevention. And prevention Mm. starts with diagnosis. And diagnosis starts with why are so many children growing up with crooked teeth today? Yeah, too much, too much, too much. Yeah, this is our big worry. You know, what can we do to stop Mm. this in its tracks? When I started working some 50 years ago as a dentist, the principal problem we had was in the United Kingdom was the vast majority of teenagers had seriously decayed teeth. Over the last 50 years, the rate of decay in teenagers in the UK and in Australia has reduced dramatically. Mm. But what have we seen increase? Malocclusion. Malocclusion. And sleep apnea and ENT problems and deviated nasal septums and TMD, jaw joint problems, all of these myriad of problems have been increasing. Absolutely. And no one seems to be able to be saying, why? What's happening? And we feel that it's very largely down to poor cranial growth and development. Yeah, yeah. A craniofacial structure, a face that's not the right shape, doesn't work properly. And if it doesn't work properly, evidence of that is crooked teeth. It's, one of the symptoms is crooked teeth. And if you've got crooked teeth, mm. you have a symptom of craniofacial dystrophy, incorrect craniofacial development, and you probably have some of the other problems as well. Yeah, but the easiest one to identify is crooked teeth. Exactly. Now, um, we're going to be putting out videos on YouTube using the material that we create from these discussions. If you want the long version, the unedited cut, that's all going to be on our Patreon site. So please do join us on Patreon to see the uncut version, the long versions of what we're creating. So I've been focusing my clinical attention on trying to help children to grow straighter teeth. And by doing that, we're looking at the whole body approach. It's, yeah, I think that's very important. Because crooked teeth is just one symptom. And once you notice that the children have crooked teeth, then we notice that there are a number of other issues associated with that, right down to the posture and even looking at children's feet, as I we know. can see in the video. I I get a lot of criticism from my orthodontic colleagues if I talk even about forward head posture. Well, me too. I've had criticism all my professional life. It hasn't stopped me doing it. Um, But uh, we look at children as a whole. And to me, the key to that is to get the child out of the dental chair. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, you 
you, you say this to me so often and I'm still using dental chairs, although I do like to get them out of the dental chair as well, you know, following yours and others' advice. I think it's very important to look at the whole person. But you do need a dental chair if we're going to do procedures in mm. math, clearly. But really the identification, if we look at children and we look at them and see children who have their mouths open. Yes. And most children have their mouths open most of the time. Yeah. So if we just look at this particular video, this is a video I filmed some years ago, but it's still as true today as it always was. And we can see adults and children most of the time have their mouths open. And we feel that's a very large part in the process of poor cranial growth and development, which we can talk about. Yeah, it's one of what we would refer to as the etiological factors. It's one of the causes. The cause. Yeah. Okay. And then that is caused in itself, I think, frequently by blocked noses and that by allergies. So it's identifying this whole process that's going to be part of our teamwork. I would also say to a certain extent that the blocked nose follows the mouth open, which comes <laughs> first is sometimes difficult to say, but yeah. they certainly go hand in hand. Yeah, very true. And the mouth breathing itself is a problem in terms of health. Just the fact that you're breathing through your mouth is physiologically less healthy than breathing through the nose. I think for multiple reasons. For multiple reasons. And if the mouth is open and the tongue is low, even if air is going in through the nose, no air is going in through the mouth as well. They are mouth breathers. Yeah, yeah. So this is an interesting definition, I think, that a lot of people don't understand about mouth breathing. A lot of people say to me, oh, but I'm breathing through my nose. However, if your tongue is down from the roof of your mouth, and if your lips are apart, you have an open oral posture. And that's the concern. I'm less concerned, although I am concerned, I'm less concerned about where the air goes. Well, I think where the air goes is important <laughs> because the physiology of breathing is better when you breathe through the nose, particularly in terms of filtration and purification of the air, which doesn't occur when you breathe through the mouth. No, I don't. And I think for other reasons it's also important, but... The tongue to palate contact and the lips being sealed and the teeth being in or near contact are so important for the overall structural growth. This is what my father terms the tropic premise. The tropic premise cornerstone of correct orofacial growth. And if the tongue's not on the roof of the mouth, the lips are apart and the teeth are apart, then it will affect how your face grows. Yes, and that can be identified just by looking at the face. Yeah. And I've been doing this for, well, hard to imagine my hair used to be that colour once. <laughs> Is that you, John? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was back in the early 1980s. And I built what we called a tooth fairy's house. It was a way of introducing myself to children. I was trying to establish a paediatric practice. And by looking at children like this, it occurred to me that this increase in the number of children who had crooked teeth was um, related to poor cranial growth. And you could see that by looking at the face. Yeah. And most children have their mouths open most of the time. Yeah, and I think it's something we need parents to look at. Because the number of times I've talked to parents about this and they swear to me their child's lips are together. Absolutely, absolutely. Even when I do lectures and I've taught this material throughout the world and often we get children to come to the lectures so we can show cer certain features of the growth and development. They're often children of the dentists and orthodontists who are in the audience. And then we discover that they've got their mouths open most of the time. And even the dentists and orthodontists don't realise their children have that. So even the parents who are in the audience have not yet observed their children's oral posture. Correct. Mm. Yeah. It's something that we don't look at. It's something that's not generally observed. But all you have to do is look just in the community and you can see it's mm. true. Mm. 
And we also think that the breastfeeding is an important part of the yes. growth and development process in the early years of life. It is. Funnily enough, I had a patient who came in today with three children who we assessed. And she said that she had got problems because she wasn't breastfed. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm sure that doesn't help, but I don't think it's the whole reason. Mm -hmm. I see so many people who are breastfed exclusively for extreme periods of time. I mean, the type of patients you know that come and see me are patients that have really done their research. So I get this interesting sample of patients and I definitely don't think it sets you off to a good start, but there's so many other factors as well that come in to contribute. Absolutely. All of my, I'm one of four, we're all breastfed, and I have a really severe malocclusion, whereas my brother has got 32 teeth in full occlusion with no crowding at all, whereas I've got a severe malocclusion. We're both breastfed, and that, I believe, was a breathing issue that I had, or in fact still have. But what I want to make... Your brother has better facial form. I'm guessing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know how to hurt me, Michael. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't have my wit and charm and personality. Yeah, he's got better facial form. He does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just wondering. <laughs> having not met him, just a wild guess. 